This is the desert. Big, dry, hot. At first look, it appears to be a place of thirst and death. But this cactus is alive and growing. It thrives in the desert climate. So does this night-loving kangaroo rat. And this young western horned owl. And this ocotillo. The desert teems with life and beauty. There, many animals and plants have adapted to the harsh desert conditions. But just what conditions do these animals and plants have to withstand? There's heat, so great that the collared lizard must find shade. And so must the linnet. The cunning fox stops its hunting and waits for evening. They must withstand wind, choking dust, and the blast of gale-driven sand, and bitter cold at night. And long, hot, dry, windy days, one after another without rain, day after day without water. What causes a desert to be so dry? Here, time-lapse photography shows how rain clouds approaching the desert are dissolved by rising hot air currents. Most of the moisture is spilled on the slopes of surrounding mountain ranges, which are effective rain cloud barriers. Evaporation and absorption of water are very rapid in the burning desert sands, so that streams actually disappear. Water holes dry up and mud cracks in the sun. Because water is so scarce in the desert, plants and animals must in some way conform or become adapted in order to survive. These barrel cacti have spongy cores in which they store the infrequent rainwater when it does come. The desert tortoise has water storage capacity within its evaporation-proof shell. Like many other desert animals, it also has the ability to extract water from the food it eats and store that water within its own body. Some plants shed their leaves in the driest weather. This prevents loss of water that would otherwise escape through the leaves. Many desert animals move about only in the cool of the night, when humidity is highest, and thus minimize evaporation of body moisture. But sometimes, the desert overcomes its inhabitants. A whole civilization once existed here, before a drought dried up their water supply. When wind blows the desert sands into moving dunes, plants in the way of the dunes are slowly buried. But they continue to fight for survival until the rising tide of sand finally smothers the last spark of life. The desert seems to demand a hard struggle for life, but many living things are at home in this harsh environment and make it a place of colorful interest. To the harsh conditions, perhaps a little beauty is added by the desert primrose, or the Indian paintbrush, or the desert dandelion. This is a Joshua tree, a relative of the lily family. The nectar of the chuparosa blossom provides both food and drink for hummingbirds. A gambled quail thrives on seeds and insects. And a Harris's ground squirrel finds plenty of plant food. Moth larvae also eat plants. They are voracious eaters and could strip the desert of foliage if they were not controlled. But fortunately, larvae are an easy to get and satisfying meal for the desert iguana, which keeps an alert lookout for its own enemies. The palmer thrasher, too, eats larvae and feeds them to its ever hungry young. 
A Gila monster searches for the eggs and young of other lizards or snakes and ground nesting birds. Its fat tail indicates that its diet is plentiful in the desert. The lizard also makes a fine meal for a young road runner. Night hawks, for example, catch food on the wing. Another bird, the vulture, soars high above the desert floor. Graceful, tireless, it searches out the carcasses of dead animals upon which it feeds. Some of these are left over from the kill of a wildcat or other desert predator. Survival in the desert often depends much on successful fight or flight. The road runner, streamlined for speed, is fast on its feet. It has spotted a meal, a whip-tailed lizard. But lizards, which the road runner seems to enjoy chasing and eating, are fast too. But the lizard often scampers into a nearby hole and the road runner finds an insect just as tasty for itself or its hungry family. But speed and cunning are not the only means by which animals in the desert escape their enemies. The horned lizard in this picture blends so well with the ground that you may not see it until it moves. When it lies flat, casting no shadow, you could easily pass by without noticing it. The jackrabbit, too, blends very well with its surroundings, but it has an even better defense with its long, strong legs for fast running. Birds also have to defend themselves. Here, well hidden in the branches of a cactus, is the home of a cactus wren. Few enemies will try to penetrate the barrier of cactus spines to get at the wren as it finds security in the nest. The needle-like thorns of the cactus help to protect the plant itself. A Gila woodpecker makes its home high up in the trunk of a saguaro cactus. After it raises its family and moves out, an elf owl may take over the already furnished apartment. A white-winged dove chooses a crotch in the saguaro as a safe place for its nest. Some creatures spend much of the time in the air above the desert. Some live underground, beyond the reach of the extreme heat, out of the sight of enemies, but most spend the time above ground and have different means of defending themselves. The desert is a fascinating place. Everything is available for a rich green life, everything but water. When there is water, the desert blooms in beauty and is rich in cool green foliage. Even the dry desert is not lifeless, for here we have found a community, a combination of plants and animals, soil and climate, all woven together in a unique life pattern, competing and cooperating, pursuing and being pursued, faced always with the problems of finding food and safety. Once again, we have seen how all living things depend upon one another for survival. Though the desert may seem harsh, it abounds with life and beauty.